long time no see. I'm drinking a glass of wine. Welcome to this week's vlog and welcome to this new hair. I did something crazy. I just watched, I don't know, 10 seconds of um, a hair tutorial and then just chopped it off with kitchen scissors. So that's fun. You know those moments when you just really need a change? And I was biking the other day and just the most random thought came to my head like, what if I just cut myself bangs? Felt like bangs needed to be for people with straight hair, which is so not true. But in general, it's been a long journey and it's still continuing for me to fully accept my curly hair. Um, definitely in the past like year and a half, I got much more comfortable with it but this like puffy bangs really test that and soon i'll probably grace you on one of these mornings with what they look like in the morning they're literally psycho and so i need to understand how to maintain them or just how to style them i never had hair practically had the same hair forever i never had something like that we're going for the 70s vibes. I've actually felt kind of um, under the weather for the past five days. Just scratchy throat, I think, in general. My body was just very exhausted. And cheers to finishing work yesterday. So I'm, we're officially on summer holiday for almost five weeks, which is so needed. I feel like good enough to treat myself to this glass of wine. What else? Oh, we're traveling on Monday to Italy to be with my parents. And then we're all flying to Greece. So there's a lot of prep that goes into traveling these days with Corona regulations. So today has been just also like doing all the forms, doing like five loads of laundry I think we did today, which you can maybe hear it in the back. It sounds like a spaceship taking off. I am still not certain that we have everything. Anyways. Um, that's kind of what we're up to until we fly. We need to pack. So if this vlog is one week, it will be Tel Aviv, which we are in now. Then it will be Rome, and then we will be in Greece. So it's a multicultural vlog. We're all over the world this week. I'm really grateful that I can travel it all and also see my family. I'll see you later, um, either tomorrow or when we are abroad. We have been inside for too long today, so we are gonna walk to a local bar, uh, one of our faves, and just sit outside, see people, feel the air. The air is not fresh. It is time that we left the house today, so we're gonna do that. Oh, it has been over here, starting this beautiful salad. It's this mango salad that we made one night when we had dinner with friends and they basically made everything and we <laughs> wanted to contribute a dish so we did this mango, a Thai salad kind of, no? So what's in here babe? Mango, red onion, bell pepper, bell pepper um, basil. basil, cilantro, and a little bit of parsley. And a little bit of parsley. And the dressing is basically lime, soy, avocado oil, but I just use olive oil, a bit of honey, and chili. And we also add a little bit of peanut butter to make it nutty.
never like sat in a in a little group, group like this. Capricorn, perhaps. <laughs> Perfetto. Hi cuties! So I started this vlog in Tel Aviv and then I had a few clips in Rome. Um, my bangs are looking ridiculous. Didn't get a really a chance to talk to you in Rome. Um, before we left we were only there about three days. So now we're in Greece so it's like the first time I'm talking to you. It's a long travel day. We had to wake up at like four. We have to leave the house at 4.15 so you can do the math in the morning. The traveling was not very long, just very early. Um, so we arrived, had lunch, went to the beach, and uh, now we're at the Airbnb. And we rented a car, and the, um, it's like a really cute two sisters that runs this car company. And one of them has a friend that owns a restaurant nearby. So we are going to check that out for dinner. It's close, it's a chill day. Everyone's running on low energy. Took a nap, woke up like a zombie, wondering what's going on with my life. That's always, do you feel like that when you wake up from a nap? Like, who am I? Anyways, um, very happy to be here, obviously. <laughs> Later I'll update you on my reading, but I started the Neapolitan Quartet of Elena Ferrante, so the, my brilliant friend is the first one, and enjoying it so far. Um, so yeah, I took the plunge into the quartet, so let's see. I do hope that even though the first book follows these two girls in their kind of adolescence, that it does sometimes flip back and forth to their adult life because, I don't know, 350 pages reading about uh, two young girls in the age of like eight or nine, I'm not sure. I would enjoy for that long. That was my only kind of feeling, like weird feeling about it. Um, I'm sure that it will jump around in time. I have a feeling that that's how it'll be. Look at that sunset. Anyways, I'm gonna try to deal with these and not drop my camera over the edge. So I'll talk to you later. That looks a bit better. <laughs> Give us a fashion show. Yes, yes, yes. <gasps> you look so beautiful. What are you wearing? Chanel. Oh, yes. I feel like they're gonna be so annoyed with me because like the whole vlog is gonna be me like, my bangs like mm, eh. Yes, there you work it. <laughs> Good morning, it's Saturday, I think. I feel so awkward vlogging, like I keep start starting to talk and it's just like, no, 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 no. We just woke up, had some breakfast, and I wanted to show you Coventry by Rachel Cusk because I finished it on the plane to Italy. Now we're in Greece, but I finished on the plane to Italy, um, Coventry and I didn't bring it with me on this trip, so I don't have it to show you, so I'll just put it on the screen somewhere. I'm so scared that if I put my camera here, it will just fly off, and then it's over. Okay, pray for my camera, please, right now. So overall thoughts about um, Coventry, I felt like it was interesting because Rachel is always interesting. You can find something that's very, um, 
worthwhile about reading anything that she writes, but overall I had a hard time with this collection. Um, I think the first section, Coventry, with the exception of the first two, I really enjoyed um, the rest of that section. And then the second section, I enjoyed bits about like her reflections on writing, how writing meets motherhood. She brings up a really interesting point that I found, I don't know, as myself as an artist, I found relatable that there's a certain element in creating art that is connected to your sort of childlike curiosity and sort of childlike imagination and playfulness. And then she was sort of talking about when you become a mother, you kind of give up this certain parts of that childhood instinct in order to, you know, take care of other small human beings. So how do you deal with being, how do you deal with creating art and being a mother when your role as like, your childlike curiosity may have passed into a new stage of being a parent. So how can you create art and how does the art change depending on when you make that kind of transition? And of course I love when writers talk about writing so that was enjoyable. And then the last section, um, I'm sorry I don't have the book with me so I can't say like, oh I loved this essay, I love this essay, I love this essay. The last section was a section on literary, her literary criticism on other pieces. And this section was difficult for me. Two essays that I must say I just skipped. And at that point I actually thought about DNFing the book. Just because I felt like I'm kind of trudging through this collection and I'm not sure why I'm insisting on finishing it. I guess it's because I really um, admire her a lot so it would be hard for me to say this one I just don't read at all. Um, but I did have the thought. So I just decided to skip these two essays about authors that I wasn't familiar with, books that I wasn't familiar with, and I just just didn't feel like reading them. And then I continued to the end and finished it. There was an essay that sort of dealt with like religious iconography. If I can uh, find the name of it, I'll put it here when I research it, when I get home. That one was really interesting. Just she was talking about churches, church imagery, Christian imagery, um, and how they also related to pieces that she had in her childhood home that she never related to because she didn't feel a strong connection with religion necessarily. But then when she, you know, raised her own children, why did she feel compelled to put these sort of religious objects inside her kids' bedroom, even though she didn't relate to them as a child? So I just thought that that was interesting and I thought like how religious lineage passes through and I don't know being a modern person relationship to tradition is interesting to me so I enjoyed that one. I felt that these essays borderlined on I thought I wasn't recording for a second and that would have been a disaster. These essays bordered on annoyingly difficult for me to understand. Um, you know if I need to look up at 10 words in a paragraph, it's it's cool, it's great, it's part of the, you know, learning um, process of reading, which I think is very important to look up words, and I like to do that. Just, it just felt like at that point, I just couldn't understand that paragraph, or I couldn't understand the context because I was all the time faced with things that went over my head and I was trying to catch up with them, but then it just sort of lost me. So it was challenging and I just think that in this particular period I wasn't interested in being challenged in that way. So I'm not sure that I would recommend this collection um, to... I think if you're a Rachel Cusk fan it's for sure something you want to pick up, but I wouldn't recommend it to someone who's never read her. I wouldn't say it's my favorite by far. I got these sunglasses. Um, Ohad and I went shopping in Rome and we stopped in a store and these are um, like handmade um, sunglasses, handmade in Italy, so I bought them. <laughs> that is my um, review kind of of my experience with Coventry. Oh, the view. I just hope you all can feel a little sense of vacation from this vlog if you're not able to go anywhere. I hope it doesn't feel um, braggy. I want it to feel like 
come visually travel with me. We're in Greece together. Um, so I started My Brilliant Friend, which I think I mentioned to you already. It's broken up into three sections. The prologue, prologue, childhood, adolescence. So I'm almost at the end of the second section, childhood. I feel like I don't have much to say about it yet, other than I love Ferrante's writing and something that I thought would kind of put me off of this book is the fact that there's an index of characters that's three pages long and I was wondering how would I possibly keep up with a story that involves that many characters and will it kind of take me out of the experience to be reading something and then flipping back and then reading and flipping back and but I must say so far it hasn't um, bothered me the few times I've had to look there we're following two young girls around the age of eight or nine named Elena and Lila or Lila from a kind of poor neighborhood in Naples. So far we're just kind of getting the beginning of the story of this these two women's friendship but we're going back in time back to when they were children. You know as always I've got things that I'm underlining with her work. So so far it's been a really um, enjoyable experience and I hope that I just continue to love it. It's kind of fun to start a series because it's a quartet of four books which normally would um, intimidate me which is not to say that it doesn't intimidate me but I just feel like I can take them at my own pace. I felt like this was a very good vacation read. I also was emailed yesterday about an arc which is a sort of piece of autofiction memoir um, mixed with like a interesting narrative so um, they're gonna send that to me digitally so I will have that to show you and I hope you just enjoy the general um, travel-y parts of this blog you want you want to move some of this? you want something to lean on? no 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 I'm good Saturday, July 31st, last day of July. Summer is in full heat, full vibe. There's a heat wave. I think I didn't mention where I am in Greece. So we're in Kefalonia, or I think in Greek they say Kefalonia, Kefalonia, in an island in the 
Ionian island group on the Ionian Sea. It's quite a big island, so half of the time we're staying sort of on the south part. Um, as you saw from the view, we're quite close to the coast. And then on Tuesday, we moved to the kind of north, northern side of the island. I hope you enjoyed some like clips of the beach and um, just the amazing, breathtaking surroundings that is Greece. If you have not been to Greece and you're thinking about a European destination, summer or winter even, because I've been to Greece in the winter and it was gorgeous, so definitely make Greece um, a big uh, option for you. So I'm gonna try to edit this vlog. I have no idea where it started, I think back in Tel Aviv at some point, so it will be a all around the world vlog. And I just wanted to update you on the book. I still didn't get very far um, because I always think that I'm gonna read a lot at the beach, but actually I love to swim in the water so much. I basically, like I barely end up reading. Today we woke up in the morning and went to the beach earlier. It was a place that was a recommendation of an amazing um, woman working in this restaurant that we've been to twice now so sweet and she gave us a recommendation of a beach she said you cannot miss this beach so we went it was amazing and we went in the morning to kind of miss the to kind of get there before the hottest part of the day starting the last section which is quite long it's the bulk of the book Ferrante just writes such um, vivid scenes I don't know how to really explain that but she just writes a good scene Scenes that I can just replay in my head, like there's a point when one of the girls flies out the window because her father literally throws her out of the window onto the street. And just the way that she, I don't know, writes these scenes, like bits like that are very vivid and they just stick in my mind. Also, I wanted to mention that the beginning of the book starts um, with Elena, one of the girls, getting a phone call from the son of the other friend, Lila or Lila. Let's call her Lila for now. And he basically calls to tell her that Lila has gone missing. They can't find her. He can't find her mother anywhere. She's cut herself out of all of the family photos. She's taken all her belongings. She's basically erased all trace of herself. So that's how um, the book starts. And I love that. I love any kind of, I don't know, family book that starts with um, that kind of mystery sort of or just you know you start the book knowing that one of the characters is going missing and then she's going back in time and you're t like getting to know their story i really like that kind of setup to a book so that was uh really enjoyable ohad bought this uh very cute hat that says Catalonia on it looks better on him than it does on me <laughs> okay that's all for now um and I'll see you later.